Hello there ladies and gentlemen, Almighty Zentaco here. Today we're going to be adding to our action RPG tutorial. Um, we are going to be learning how to make some simple enemies and move them about the screen randomly and they're going to bump into stuff and uh, kind of if they get into a wall they'll move out of it. Also we're going to prevent them from crossing screen thresholds. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a link down below in the description so you can download Fusion if you don't have it. This is a tutorial for ClickTeam Fusion 2.5, which is an easy game making software. I recommend it for newcomers uh, and people who just want to make some uh, quick games pretty, pretty easily. So <clears throat> the first thing you're going to want to do is right click and insert an object, put in the active object, and this is going to be our enemy template. Go ahead and rename that enemy. Now this is going to need some alterable values, so stick three in there. First one's going to be RND. That stands for random, that's going to be a random number. Uh, then we're going to need a direction value, that is going to be the value that controls which direction our enemy is moving into. <clears throat> and the last value is speed, SPD. Uh, speed is going to be the value at which the enemy is moving different directions. We're going to go ahead and make that two for now. At any point in which you want to change the speed of the enemy, you can do that through code or you can just change it right here. Uh, we're doing it this way because this is easier for kind of messing about with the different feel, the different options and feel of our game without having to go through every event and hard code it. Any opportunity you have to make a changeable number, a alterable value, I recommend doing that instead of hard coding it because it's a nightmare to go back and edit things. All right, so we got enemy directions here ready to go. So right there, we're going to add a always event. What we're going to do is always change the alterable value going to set R&D to random 100. Okay, <clears throat> and uh, what that is essentially is, uh, like I said, it's number that's that's randomly generated. It's always going to be returning a number between 0 and 99. Uh, now, the bigger this number, the uh, the less often that this is going to trigger. Because what we're trying to do here, I'll show you right here, we are going to have something happen whenever that number equals 1. So. If the alterable value of R&D equals one, then we're gonna do something. And that thing we're gonna do is we're going to set the value of direction to random five. Now random five will return us a number between zero and four. Zero is going to be not moving for the enemy, and then one, two, three, and four will be representing different directions. So if you, <coughs> um, if you want to change the frequency at which this happens, that the enemies change directions, then you need to change the value of, of uh, R&D here. Okay, see so we have it currently to random 100. Something bigger will be less often, something smaller will be more frequent. All right, so <clears throat> enemy directions. We are going to say if the alterable value of enemy equals, uh, and the value is direction, if direction equals zero, we're gonna do something. Now we're gonna copy and paste this because we need four directions. So go ahead and change that uh, zero to one and the, this zero to two. We're essentially gonna need something to happen for numbers one, two, three, and four. All right, <clears throat> so if direction, we're gonna make direction one right, direction two left, three up, four down. So if direction equals one, we're gonna need to move the enemy right. So we will change the position, the X coordinate of the enemy to its current x coordinate plus the value of speed. Alrighty. Um, now, since two is left, we're gonna just copy this and then do the inverse. So we're gonna turn that plus into a negative, sending him in the other direction. Uh, direction three, we said was gonna be up, so we will change the position, the y coordinate of the enemy to its current y coordinate minus the value of speed. All right, and then for four, which is down, we're just gonna copy this, edit it, and we're gonna do the inverse, which is plus. <clears throat> so this should work. We're gonna take a look real quick and, and uh, see what it looks like. But this should let our enemy just kinda wander around randomly, as well as stop. But he's not gonna collide with anything yet. So as you see, he does move around. He, he 
seems to be able to go all directions, but he does get into the backdrops, which we do not want to happen. So we're gonna copy, um, actually, let me get this comment. I need a comment just so I can kind of keep track of what's going on. This is gonna be enemy collisions. All right, so we're gonna copy all these directions because we want the opposite to happen whenever he collides with something. So <clears throat> we need to add a condition here. And that condition is going to be, is the enemy colliding with a backdrop, or rather overlapping a backdrop? So go ahead and copy that uh, condition and add it to every single one of these events here. So um, now what we have is something that says, if we, the enemy is facing a certain direction and overlapping a backdrop, we want something to happen. What we want to happen is him to come out of the backdrop. So all we need to do is reverse the direction he is currently moving. So turn all those positives to negatives and negatives to positives. And that will pull the enemy out of the wall. <clears throat> Except there's one more thing we're going to want to do. Um, where it says R and D equals one, and that's when we change the direction to a random direction. We do not want any direction changes to occur when the enemy is in a wall. So we need to add another condition here. And that condition is collisions overlapping a backdrop uh, under the enemy. And then we're gonna go ahead and negate that, saying that if the enemy is not overlapping a backdrop, then you can go ahead and give him a random direction if the R and D value is one. Otherwise, he could get stuck in a wall, and while you're pulling him out of that wall, uh, the direction could potentially change, and then he would it would just screw things up. It would drift him out of the wall, <clears throat> or maybe into a weird direction. It's just not it's not good. We don't want that. So um, this should have collisions now, this enemy, but he can cross panels. As you can see right there, he's crossing the panel, but he does collide, and he doesn't appear to get stuck, so he is functionally functioning properly, except I don't want him to be able to cross uh, the panel threshold. So we're going to copy all of this, paste it, and we're going to say keep enemy on panel. Um, and so what we want to do here is replace overlapping a backdrop with uh, something, click on the enemy, and it's under uh, position. We're looking for is enemy getting close to windows edge and set that value to negative one. So what that means is whenever the enemy is has just barely crossed the screen, that's the point at which this is going to trigger. So delete all of these is overlapping of backdrops and copy the uh, getting close to the window's edge and just go ahead and paste that into every single one of these conditions. Uh, it's going to be doing though, the, the, the event is going to be identical to when he collides with the wall. So we don't need to change anything there. We just want him to come away from the panel edge. So now we should have a fully functional enemy. So let's get a bunch of these dudes, copy them about, so we can kind of see how they behave when you have a whole ton of them on the screen. Okay, see, they collide with the backdrop, they collide with the panels, they can't get off the screen. That is exactly what we want. So it currently works fine. What we need to do next though, is we're gonna need to import the art for these enemies and we're gonna need to uh, set up directions, uh, art directions based on which direction value the enemy is currently possessing. So essentially which way he's facing, we're gonna need to make the enemy face that direction. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and import the art we need for our enemy. It's gonna be... All right, let's see how this art looks on these dudes. Okay, so they're animated. We just need to set their directions. So to do that, um, we will do that under enemy directions. Now, as we know, direction one was right. So under the enemy, we will go to direction, select direction and select right. Two is left, so we will go to direction, select direction, select left. Uh, three was up, so we will go again to direction, select direction, make that one up. And for the last one, we will go to direction, 
select a direction and we will make that one down. Let's see if it worked. All right, look at that. They kind of look goofy, <laughs> um, but it works. This is our, our Octorok clone. So we're gonna make these dudes shoot as well in this tutorial. And uh, that'll about wrap it up once we get their shooting done. So let's do that now. Let's go ahead and figure out how to make them shoot. All right, so now we're gonna add the projectiles. Let these, these little Octorok clone dudes fire off. So let's insert an active object. Let's call this projectile uh, underscore enemy. So we know it's the enemy projectile. Got some art for this. Need to center the hot spot. Okay, it's centered by default. Okay, that rock is huge, so we're gonna resize it even more. That's still a little too big. There we go, it's fine. All right, we're gonna throw this off the screen. Click on its properties. Um, we do not want this thing to be created at start. <clears throat> So let's let the Octorox be able to fire. So we will call this, uh, leave a, <coughs> we'll leave a comment and say fire projectiles. There's a couple ways to trigger um, a random event. We're gonna have these projectiles fire off randomly. We're gonna do this using uh, something under special and as X out of Y at random, we're gonna say one, out of 100. And you can edit these to get the sort of frequency you want. All right, and then what we're gonna do is click on our enemy and we're gonna say, launch an object. That's gonna be the projectile. And we're gonna say, use the direction of enemy and we're gonna make the projectile move at about 40. Let's go ahead and give that a test and see how that looks. That's pretty frequent. Now, as you see, they all seem to shoot pretty much only at the exact same time. Um, that's the downside to using X out of Y at random if you're not putting it inside of a behavior. So to make this uh, different for each one, we're going to need to refer to our uh, random alterable value inside the enemy. So we're gonna replace this. Click on the enemy and we're going to say uh, alterable value compared to one of the ultra values and that's going to be random or R&D and we need to make sure it's different from when they turn. They turn it at one so it can be anything. We'll just make it two. So that should unlink their attacks. They should attack separately now. Yep. Alright so uh, let's go ahead and destroy the object when it hits the background. So doesn't move through the screen. When it collides with a backdrop, we are simply going to destroy it. And this is the point in which you would want to uh, also create an effect, an explosion effect, if that's what you want to have. Um, but we don't need that. <clears throat> now, there is an issue currently uh, with this. It's not the best way to do things. These enemies, they can cross the screen threshold because our screen slowly pans, it doesn't snap. So if they're at the sides here, um, they can they can cross it whenever see, whenever I move across the screen. Um, also, because they're just moving about all the time, you can you don't know where they're at when you cross the screen threshold, and so you can step right into one. And if you take damage when you hit these, that's not good for game design. So what we're gonna do is give them two more alterable values. We're gonna call them start X and start Y. <clears throat> and what we're gonna do is at the start of the frame, we are going to set their current position of X and Y into start X and start Y. So that where you place them is, um, is gonna be in those variables. And then when you leave the screen, we're gonna make it so that they go back to those positions. So start a frame, we're gonna start set the alterable value of start X to the enemy's X position. And we're gonna do the same thing for start Y. So set start Y to the enemy's Y position. Now, we need to, um, whenever they are not on the screen, we need to put them at those positions. So reposition 
enemies when off screen. So how we're going to do that is we are going to check the position <clears throat> of our enemy. We're going to say is enemy getting close to Windows Edge, and if it's negative, um, we can do one. Let's just do negative five. <clears throat> uh, we will say set the position, the x coordinate to the value of star x, and we're going to set the y coordinate to the value of star y. So position y coordinate to the value start Y. <clears throat> Here we go. Okay, they're moving around. And they're back at their initial positions, which were not really that well placed because you can still hit a do when you cross the threshold, but that's a design flaw and not a programming flaw. So there we go. Um, seems we're done here. Actually, there's one more thing we want to do. We want these projectiles to be destroyed when they're off the screen. So we will do the same thing. Um, <clears throat> that we did for when we repositioned the enemies. So let's go ahead and do that now. Say destroy off screen projectiles. And if the position is getting close to Windows Edge, negative one is fine, then we're just going to destroy it. So if it touches the edge, it'll be destroyed, or if it's off screen, it'll be destroyed. <clears throat> Come on, shoot one over this way. Dang it, come on. Yep, okay, so it gets destroyed whenever it crosses the screen threshold. So, um, that about does it, guys. Thanks for watching this video. This concludes part two of our Action RPG tutorial series. If you have any other suggestions or things you want to learn about how to make an Action RPG, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Or if you have any questions, I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching, and I hope you guys all have a fantastic day. Catch you later.